OMG. Hey everybody. I'm here in uh, not New York. I'm actually here in uh, Park City, Utah. Thought I'd make a little trip here. Uh, well, I didn't think I'd make a little trip here. I actually came here for Thanksgiving to meet up with some family from uh, Nicaragua who uh, who lives in Utah. Um, you know, a handful of them, which uh, increased the Nicaraguan population of Utah by 100% by moving here. And it's kind of cool. We got to visit, hang out in Park City for a bit. So I'm going to do a little walk real quick of, uh, of Park City, Utah, which is a very cool historical little town here. Very good skiing and everything. Not going to be doing anything of that today, but just so you guys know, uh, before we start, <laughs> if you could, uh, please check out the Patreon. Huge help. Um, helps fund these things, all that stuff, improve the quality, you know, that whole thing. Also, uh, you know, give it a little like, give it a little thumbs up. We're in Park City, for God's sake. It's an amazing place. Uh, and also, too, subscribe. That's a big help. Uh, hit the little button. It's not, not that hard. All this helps boost the analytics. Uh, very important, uh, or so I'm told. I'm going to go to my grave not understanding what any of this stuff means, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, I'm going to make a quick walk down Main Street here in a second with my brother, Silvio, who's man in the camera. Aww. Silvio, how you doing? Doing great. I believe it. I believe it with the enthusiasm like that. Um, you ready to walk this little Main Street area here? We're getting some weird looks from all the uh, people who live in these million dollar houses, but uh, what do you think? Should we walk down here? Let's do it. All right, well, let's do it. So, real quick, before we start, we're actually walking away from a little house uh, called the Nicholas Rowe House, which actually built in 1884 and was added onto. You can actually see where it was added onto a second story back there. Uh, you don't need to, I'll get it in B-roll, don't you worry. You keep it on this mug, all right? Uh, but uh, that house is actually built in 1884, which is uh, ironically the year that Park City was incorporated. Here we're actually walking by a house called the Durkin House, which was built in 1901. Interestingly enough, now the background of Park City is mining. This was a mining town. Uh, that's one of the most important mining towns in the United States. They mined silver, they mined uh, lead, zinc, and gold actually. So when you hear of all the prospecting and all the, in the second half of the 1800s and people rushing out to stake claims and things, this was one of those towns. Um, it wasn't incorporated until 1884, however. So this house, the, uh, the Durkin house, was actually built in 1901. And the reason it was built in 1901 was because uh, before that, men had to live in, uh, in houses, boarding houses, single men had to live in boarding houses near the actual mines. Uh, in 1901, they said that people could live in the actual town, uh, and that's the town of Park City. Uh, so in 1901, they actually built these different uh, little uh, boarding houses in town for these people. Uh, so we're walking down Main Street. This is Main Street. Go figure. It's the principal street here in town. You can see like, the little stairs and stuff. Check this out. Sylvia over here to the left. Little stairs that go up and, you know, go to different streets that run parallel to uh, Main Street here. Uh, so anyways, we're walking down Main Street. A little history here. Uh, so the first people to actually head down to uh, Park City or pass through this area were actually the Mormons. Uh, the Mormons. A man named Brigham Young. If you guys know who Brigham Young was, he was actually the successor to Joseph Smith, who started the Mormon uh, religion, actually in New York, upstate New York. He actually, you know, had a vision. Uh, you know, he had to tr uh, translate these tablets, but he's actually murdered. Uh, believe it or not, he was murdered in jail, and uh, you know, a lot of persecution there. So, as a way to kind of uh, get out of all that persecution, uh, Brigham Young led a bunch of Mormons out of the East into the West, and they came here and actually passed just north of where Park City. Uh, in 1847. Uh, in fact, they didn't actually allow mining within the Mormon community because they didn't want a bunch of Gentiles coming over here and ruining everything if they found anything. So the first people to actually start mining here were, uh, were actually soldiers. They were sent here. A man named O'Connor, uh, uh, a colonel, was sent here with a bunch of men. They set up a little fort nearby and they were the first ones to actually start uh, mining for any kinds of minerals, right? So, the first minerals were actually found in 1868, right near here, uh, and they, they found it, and because there was a storm brewing and all this stuff, they put a flagpole there with a bandana hung from it as a way to stake the claim for the next year when they could start mining it, and it was called Flagstaff. Ah, Flagstaff Mountain, that's a cool fact, right, so? It is pretty cool. Thanks, man. Also, to check it out. This is cool, Treasure Mountain Inn. So, this dates back to the 1960s. So the first half of the 1960s is when skiing started to take off here. Skiing started to take off in the early 1960s because mining had dried up here. So this was mining town from the 1800s all the way until the mid-1900s. But once the mining dried up, this town became pretty much a ghost town. In the 1950s, this town was a complete ghost town. And as a way to kind of revitalize the town, you had uh, the, basically the mining interest turned to skiing. This is the Wasatch Brewery. The brew pub. We ate here the other day, right, Sal? It was. It was pretty good, right? Cheers. All right. Let's keep walking. How you doing over there? Is the lighting okay? 
messing with it a little bit. All right, let's keep messing with it. It's going to be a little tight here, so uh, don't worry. I'm going to get some dirty looks, but whatever. I think people are more impressed that someone's actually filming here. So this just, you know, is a small, pretty small town. I think it's like, I don't know, a handful of like 8,000, 7,000 people live here. But obviously there's a lot more tourists than there are people who live here, especially when it starts ski season. So I was telling you guys also too, this is a mining town. Some of, some of the main um, mining, I guess, uh, interests here. In 1872, you had the actual Ontario mine uh, that, was, that was founded here in 1872. And that was one of the principal mines that, was, that operated throughout. It was actually one of the biggest ones here in Park City. The, the next one came in 1892 and it was called the Silver King Mine. Uh, interestingly enough, that mine was started by a guy uh, whose wife became the Silver Queen because he died two years after basically having it, you know, buying into it. He died two years later and she basically was the one who reaped all the rewards. This is the Egyptian theater. One of a good example of Egyptian revival architecture. This was built in the 1920s. This, this theater actually kind of replaced what was already here. There was a Dewey theater here from the 19-teens that the uh, roof caved in. So they remade it to be an Egyptian theater, like Egyptian looking. One of the reasons why they turned to Egyptian uh, revival architecture on that time was because King Tut's tomb had just been found. Ah, 1922, so people were super excited about that. Some, uh, some English dude found it uh, over in the Valley of the Kings, and uh, everyone was so excited about finding this tomb that people were like, oh, let's make some Egyptian architecture. So they made this theater, and in fact, this is actually a very important uh, venue for the Sundance Film Festival. Ah, so a lot of famous people come here. Maybe I should try to find a job here, huh? I don't know. The theater, one of the many venues of the uh, Sundance Film Festival, which, by the way, was, uh, was started actually in Salt Lake City and uh, moved here a few years later because they were having trouble bringing people here, the, the actual, or bringing people to the festival. And as a way to attract, I guess, uh, visitors and attendants to the actual festival, they moved it to beautiful Park City. Ah, smart. Yes, and you know Robert Redford was actually involved in that, so did you know that? I don't know. You know who Robert Redford is? I do. What movie was he in? Castle. Uh, I never saw Last that. Castle. Yeah, there you go, Last Castle. He was also in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which is what he named the Sundance Institute after. Ah. And the Sundance Institute actually was like involved in like, you know, uh, uh, like grooming directors and, and filmmakers. It had a big role in getting uh, Quentin Tarantino's career off the ground. Sex Lies and Videotape was, uh, was, a, was a movie of Steven Soderbergh that premiered at uh, Sundance in 1989. So it became a very important um, festival. So every every year in January, this whole area gets taken over by all these celebs, you know, fancy celebs, they come and take over this area. It's very fancy. Um, but yeah, you know, dozens and dozens, hundreds of uh, shows and movies and things premiere here all the time. Uh, movies like Reservoir Dogs premiered here. Uh, yeah, Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> Other stuff too. You know that movie, right? I do. I don't want to get run over by a car, but you can see a good view down of Main Street here. There's a nice little Main Street. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. You asked me if I was YouTube, and that's probably one of the more embarrassing things that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Another thing that helped boost this, this town is actually the Olympics. The Olympics, which uh, actually started in 2002. I'm sorry, the, the Winter Olympics, would hitch, which hit Park City in 2002. They actually secured the games in 1995. Uh, and they were trying for a very long time. And so in 2002, the, the actual games came here and it boosted the town a lot, obviously. Uh, and in fact, they actually got in trouble. The IOC got in trouble because they, uh, they were given gifts, a lot of gifts by the Salt Lake Committee to try to get them here. And so there was a big, there was a big scandal and they fired the CEO and they hired Mitt Romney as the CEO of the Salt Lake Committee because uh, he's honest Mitt, I guess, and they wanted to uh, give it a more a cleaner uh, reputation. I can't, I can't remember some of the highlights from that, from that Olympics, but, uh, but uh, I think it was Apollo Ono, you guys remember him? He was like a, probably more famous, he was a speed skater, but he's probably more famous for being a subway spokesperson. Him and Jared, I guess. <coughs> so I was saying that the mining became very popular the second half of the 1800s here, right? Very popular here. Silver was huge, the Silver King mine was a very big mine. You also had the Ontario mine, which is one of the biggest. It was actually part owned by this man named Tom Kearns, who became very rich. And uh, he was like a very like legendary guy here in, um, in Utah. In fact, the house that he built in Salt Lake City was so nice that it ended up becoming the governor's mansion. It's actually the governor's mansion uh, there in Salt Lake City. And he was the Ontario mine owner. 
So Park City was a very, very important town here in Utah. You thought I was gonna hit that pole, didn't you? I've been doing this a long time. I'm YouTubing, dog. Don't forget that. This is, oh, so this is kind of cool. This is the post office here. So this post office has been here for a very long time as well, 1921. It doesn't look the same as it used to, but it's been here for a while. And because it's in the mountains, because of all the crazy like streets and roads and all that stuff, there isn't actually door-to-door -door, uh, mail service in a lot of places, even still. So people have to come here to pick up their mail. So going in the mail and going to the post office is actually kind of like a big thing. People go and they, you know, they see all their friends and they kind of, you know, chat and kind of hang out. It's like, you know, put on your Sunday best, everybody. We're going down to the post office. Hell yeah. You got to see all your friends and all that stuff is all here at the post office. Kind of cool. And also, too, I forgot to mention that the Egyptian theater, which is kind of cool, that was actually, uh, they actually, to build it, they actually hired an Egyptologist from uh, Seattle to come and uh, help build it. Isn't that pretty cool, Sal? That's awesome. Yeah, that's a pretty cool job, Egyptologist. Very underrated profession. You got to put that, you got to lead, lead with that on your Bumble profile, huh? Egyptologist. This is pretty cool. Park City Museum. So this little building here used to be the actual, uh, this used to actually be the uh, City Hall. Right here. See, it's to my right. It's now the museum, the Park City Museum. Who I got some of the information that I'm talking about from. So the actual building was been at, finished in 1885. It's been added on to in 1901. They added a tower, a whistle tower, to actually warn people of fires because there was a huge fire here in 1898. The Great Fire of 1898 here in Park City. Let's say you know it's a town, like a little town, they have a great fire. I think every town has a great fire. Look at all these nice little houses, so, huh? Very nice, huh? I want one. Well, I hope you got a few million dollars. What's crazy is like, uh, you know, I live in New York, so, you know, what would get you a palace here on the mountain would probably get you like two bedroom apartment in New York, which kind of sucks. All right, we're moving. You got any questions so far, Sale? I feel like this is so rude. I'm not asking you anything. It's going well. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? It is. We're trying to beat the the, the light here because we're gonna we're gonna run out of light, and um, I, we dropped off my mom at the supermarket, so we got to go pick her up, and she's gonna be waiting for us with spaghetti and stuff. She's gonna make spaghetti tonight, Nicaraguan spaghetti. Ever heard of it? Put that in the video. Yeah, we'll make we'll uh, we're gonna that's gonna be the end of the video. We're gonna be eating spaghetti. Let's check it out. This is pretty cool. This building here is a claim jumper, built in 1882, one of the few buildings this uh, city hall barely survived, but this is one of the few buildings that survived that great fire of 1898. So just to give you an idea, in 1898, this fire started at about 4 a.m. 200 of the 350 buildings in the entire city burned to the ground. Uh, by 8 a.m., when people were showing up to put this fire out, the whole thing was pretty much just burnt to a crisp. Uh, and most of the buildings were wood, so see you later, pretty much a tinder box. But this is one of the few buildings that were, did survive, and it was brick, so guess what people did after that? They built their buildings in brick because of this, the claim jumper. Also, it's called claim jumper because that was the name of people who would try to take other people's claims. So the way it worked was when you were mining, when you were a prospector, for example, you'd go to these public lands, you were allowed to, by law, to go to these public lands and look for, you know, you know minerals, gold, and all that stuff. And if you found something, you, st you staked your claim. You put, these little, like, you put these little, like, posts around where you were actually mining, and that was yours. And then you just had to start mining it. There were people called claim jumpers who tried to actually steal the claims from other people. They would just show up to these things and pretend that there was, it was never, you know, never there. Kind of, kind of messed up. Our, our mother raised us not to be claim jumpers, right, Sal? So? Yeah, never be a claim jumper. How's the lighting right now? Good. How's your, how are you feeling right now, more importantly? I'm feeling great. Good, I like to hear that. But I can't feel my hands. Well, I'm, uh, we'll stop by, uh, uh, we'll stop by, North Face and get you some gloves. Maybe some sponsorship? That's right, North Face, if you want to send some gloves over. Uh, if you want to send some gloves over, feel free. Still ain't gonna pump your brand, bro, but I'll wear them. Cool, you can see like these little like stairs down in the distance where you go up and down. So I was telling you that this whole town right now, it's kind of down season. This, uh, the actual ski season doesn't really start until like the beginning of December. We're in uh, Thanksgiving time. A little window into my Thanksgiving. That's a bad place to spend Thanksgiving. But, uh, but once the season hits, everything gets more expensive. Gets more crowded as well. Anyways, I was telling you guys about the Sundance. In case, in case you guys don't know, so Robert Redford was added on to like the commission of this, uh, you know, the, the, the group that put on the original 
what was called the U.S. Film Festival, right? And initially changed, or eventually changed to the Sundance Festival. In case you guys don't know who Rob Redford is, he, I, I guess you guys, you Gen Zers, you millennials watching, he's like, uh, he's like the, he's like if Matthew McConaughey didn't do the Lincoln commercials, and something like that. Is that a good description, Sue? Yeah. All right, let's keep moving. So prospecting, I was talking about that too, is kind of like a big thing, obviously, in the second half of the 1800s. People would come out west, everyone knows about the 49ers in California and the gold rush there. But people would come out here and they'd find things like silver, they'd find things like lead and all, zinc or whatever, and they would stake a claim and you know they'd become millionaires. And sometimes these prospectors would just look to find these things and they wouldn't worry about the mining, they'd just sell the rights. So I was telling you guys about the Ontario mine of 1872. Uh, those rights were actually bought by a guy named George Hurst. Uh, if you guys have ever heard of the name Hearst, his son, William Randolph Hearst, ended up being the famous newspaper guy, what Citizen Kane is based on. His dad was pretty rich. Go figure that a rich guy's dad was rich. That's why he's rich. But uh, anyways, he was actually, he made his money from mining. Ended up becoming a senator. Kind of cool, huh? You bet you didn't know that, Sal. So anyways, uh, this whole area here, this whole uh, town was pretty much just a mining town. Um, all throughout the late 1800s and into the first half of the 1900s. And uh, it's what kind of made it prosper. Like the 1890s was a huge time for this neighborhood. I'm sorry, not neighborhood, this town. And just so you guys know too, Park City was incorporated in 1884, but it got its name in, eight, in the 1870s. They, it's called Park City because this area was called Parley's Park. And they all met together and like, let's call it Parley's Park City. But eventually the Parley's was dropped. This guy Parley was actually, uh, he was a Mormon who started a toll road just near here. So people would pass through this area and he'd charge the money to pass through this area uh, early on, like the 1860s and whatnot. And uh, you know, they named it Parley Park City, dropped the Parley, it's Park City, and then they incorporated it as Park City in 1884. All right, let's just cross. Sure. Don't wanna get run over by a car. So another thing to be, uh, to be conscious of is obviously Utah is a very big Mormon uh, history. Uh, just so you know, the Mormon church isn't that big. It's 16 million people, which is actually bigger than the amount of Jews there are in the, in the world. Go figure. That's an interesting fact. People don't realize that. 16 million. 16 million. So I was, was very engrossed in the camera. That's why I didn't hear me. Uh, but because of that, you have a lot of more, it, it tends to be a more conservative state. So one of the things that happened here, for example, is that you had, um, in 1917, Prohibition hit here first, before it hit the rest of the country. They called it the Great Experiment. They actually, um, they actually outlawed alcohol before they outlawed it in the rest of the country, before Prohibition struck in 1919, which is kind of interesting. And up until recently, actually, there was actually laws here in Utah uh, about selling what they called near beer, which is like 3.2% um, alcohol by weight. Uh, which is not as much as a regular beer. So play, play, people like Budweiser would have to make these types of beer for places like Utah, where they would sell it. And I don't think they sell alcohol on Sundays. And actually here in Utah, the Utah actually runs, the state run, the liquor is all state run here. So when you go to a, a liquor store, it's all like a monopoly of the state. It runs the uh, liquor and, and beer distribution here. You wanna go on this side, so see this? This is a mining town up until, like I said, the mid-1900s when it became a ghost town and then became skiing. But a lot of interesting things that made the, the kind of life here different. Uh, in fact, there was a lot of different types of people here. There was actually English, Scottish, Scandinavian, Chinese. There was a good amount of Chinese people here because a lot of them came over to build the railroads and the railroads were built here out west and then when they were finished the railroads, they had nothing to do. So they would look for things to do and they came here. It's actually a mine. So there was actually a big, a decent sized Chinatown that was actually destroyed in the fire of 1898. All right, let's stop here real quick. Actually, no, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'll show you guys, this is a good view back here. We can end that, uh, this bridge right there. Check it out. Hey, don't you dare leave me ever again. You hear me? All right. You know what's funny is like we've been walking through and everyone's been like looking and like seeing and seeing me with this camera and uh, like what, what's going on? Who is this guy? Is In New York you could you could walk with your pants around your ankles and no one looks at you. <laughs> and here they're just like they see a camera and they're like who is that? Is that Robert Redford Jr.? 
So a couple of interesting stories too, as we're winding down. So I was telling you, there's two lives basically that Park City's lived. One was as a mining town, right? Then in the 1960s, the Park City, uh, early 1960s, Park City Mountain is open as a ski resort. Then in 1968, what became the Canyons uh, Resort opened as well. 1981, Deer Valley opened. So there's three mountains right here in this area. And in fact, Canyons was recently connected with a, with a uh, with a ski lift to Park City, making it one of the biggest ski mountains in uh, North America. That's pretty cool. You know, there's other stuff to do here. Obviously, you have the Olympic Park. As the Olympic Winter Olympics, a lot of them were done here. They had the alpine skiing, obviously, here. They built another place for the, nor the ski jumping as well as the bobsledding. And you can, uh, you know, you can go actually and ride the bobsled uh, there. It's pretty cool. Like, you can do that, you know, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm not going to do that, so uh, you know you can go watch one of the 20 other YouTube videos that where people ride the bobsled thing, and you can watch people act surprised and crazy afterwards. Uh, am I bitter that I'm that I didn't get offered to go for free by the actual bobsled place? No. Okay. Uh, so just whatever. But uh, you can do that kind of stuff. Obviously, skiing once the ski uh, the uh, ski season starts, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's really, really a great little town. It's very small, uh, but a very important town in Utah's history for its mining. Uh, you know, it has connections to Salt Lake. It, it, was, a, it was a very important uh, place for all the, the silver that was mined here and uh, other, other things as well. But this was kind of like a mining town. It was a wild west, man. There were like shootouts and the saloons, and it was a pretty, pretty crazy little place for a very long time. Uh, then it became a ghost town in the 1950s. Not really a ghost town, but there wasn't many people here. You get it. And then uh, it became a ski town. And now it's home to the Sundance Film Festival, home to the Winter Olympics in 2002, home to uh, pretty sick views like this one, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty good little walk. So we covered a lot, huh? Feel good. And uh, our mom is still waiting for us at the, uh, at the supermarket. She's probably sitting on the curb freezing. Um, hopefully she doesn't get hypothermia and, you know, I have to start a Kickstarter for her hospital bills. I don't, I don't know why I'm talking about this. This is terrible and dark. Um, but yeah, we're right next to one of the ski lifts. Um, I don't know, man. What do you think, sir? Do you think we covered everything? This is good. This is a good view? This is great. Am I too dark? I think it's just the sunset. Oh, okay. All right, well, whatever. All right, well, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you liked it, check out my other videos. I try to bounce around and do videos where I go. I like to learn about the history and things like that. So uh, it's not a chore. I do it because I love you. Oh. Dinner time. Anyways, um, yeah, if you guys like the video, you know, like it, the thing, the freaking, you know, thumbs up. Also, too, subscribe is huge. Subscribe, that helps the analytics, you know, the little analytics. Oh, and also, please, please, please <clears throat> check out the Patreon. Helps fund these things, helps my mom uh, afford the uh, pasta that we're going to eat tonight. Um, we're, we're, we're living in a, in a shanty town. Uh, we're staying in a shanty town at the side of one of the old mine um, tunnels. And uh, so, <laughs> so we want to make our way out from that. Uh, but anyways, uh, that was pretty much it. Pretty cool town, Park City, Utah, baby. I'm gonna go mix with all the Utahns, as they're called, and the Parkites, as they're called. Uh, go read the Park Record newspaper, one of the oldest papers in Utah. Uh, you know, also too, this is one of the first towns to have uh, lighting, street lighting. Electric street. Okay, well, I'm just rambling and babbling. Per use, <laughs> as the kids say, what am I talking about? All right, well, that's pretty much the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you later. Sick.